Two 60 horsepower Mercury Mark 75s were off again, running smoothly and powerfully around the surveyed course. Welcome aboard! Today's story reveals how Mercury Marine changed the world of boating in ways you may not have expected. From humble beginnings to global dominance, Mercury's history is packed with innovations, triumphs, and a few twists that'll keep you on the edge of your seat. The brand's legendary engines revolutionized on-water adventures for commercial fishermen, weekend cruisers, and adrenaline junkies alike. Let's dive right in. Carl Kiefer's Mercury Marine engines were born from necessity and ingenuity. In 1939, he purchased a failing outboard motor company in Cedarburg, Wisconsin, intending to produce magnetic separators for dairies. Instead, he found a warehouse full of defective Thor outboards. Rather than discarding them, he meticulously reworked the engines, refining their design until they performed to his high standards. This relentless pursuit of improvement became the foundation of the Mercury brand. By 1940, these revamped engines were sold under the name Mercury. Though small by today's standards, around 3.2 horsepower, they quickly gained a reputation for reliability and smooth performance, attracting fishermen and boating enthusiasts. Unlike the bulky, problematic motors of the time, Mercury's design was simple, dependable, and easy to maintain, qualities that resonated with Americans seeking practical solutions. Mercury's early success wasn't part of a grand corporate plan, but rather the result of Key Kafer's obsession with fixing what others deemed broken. In an era when outboard motors were often and unreliable, Mercury's superior performance spoke for itself. That philosophy, engineering excellence driven by necessity, set the company on a path that would revolutionize the boating industry. Let's turn the clock back just a bit further. Before Mercury Marine became a powerhouse in the boating industry, the man behind it all, Carl Kiekhafer, wasn't even dreaming of building outboard motors. He had aimed to manufacture magnetic separators for the dairy industry. However, that fateful warehouse purchase turned him into an outboard motor mogul almost overnight. Some folks say that if he hadn't been forced to confront a pile of unwanted engines, the entire course of boating history might have looked very different. Kiekhafer was a perfectionist with a flair for showmanship. He hated the idea of releasing any product that wasn't, in his words, bulletproof. This philosophy soon set Mercury apart, because in the early 1940s, outboard motors often fell victim to sputtering starts, frequent carburetor issues, and cheap construction. Mercury's approach, making sure each engine was meticulously tested, eliminated many of these headaches. Keek Hafer famously tested engines to the point of near destruction, once even saying that Mercury outboards would run until the gas tank is empty and then some. This obsession with quality earned Mercury its first wave of loyal customers, who spread the word that these engines simply performed better than just about anything else on the market. It was a triumph not just for Key Kafer, but for a budding company that never even planned to be in the marine industry. That knack for stumbling onto opportunity and then perfecting it to an unmatched degree became Mercury's signature move, one that would catapult them from making a few outboards to transforming the world of boating as we know it. Some of the earliest Mercury success stories came from local boat races. Even if the engines were smaller, they were zippy and handled well, earning Mercury outboards a reputation for speed. Soon, the Mercury name was attached to a feeling of freedom on the water. In the 1940s, amidst the backdrop of a country at war, these robust little engines symbolized something distinctly American. Innovation, resilience, and a good old-fashioned get-it-done attitude. During World War II, Mercury, then Kiekhafer Corporation, took on several government contracts that kept its facilities buzzing with work. Though the war put recreational boating on hold for many American families, it introduced new technological demands that challenged Mercury to become even more creative. When the war finally ended, the company emerged with advanced manufacturing techniques and a renewed focus on pushing engine performance to the limit. Kiekhafer saw racing as a stage to show off Mercury's strengths. He had an almost fanatical drive to see the black liveried engine engines prove their mettle in competitions around the country. By 1949, Mercury was sponsoring racing teams, chasing after speed records and collecting trophies. The racetrack became Mercury's R&D lab, where every tweak and improvement, whether in carburation or propeller design, could be tested under stressful conditions. If it survived racing, it would excel in the hands of everyday boaters. This turned Mercury into a household name, not just among the performance crowd, but also among casual boating enthusiasts who were thrilled to see trickle-down 
technology from the racetrack. The company's racing routes weren't without controversy. Some critics argued that Mercury's emphasis on speed overshadowed practicality, leading to breakneck innovations that perhaps arrived to consumers too soon. But customers who adored racing wanted that edge, that adrenaline, and for better or worse, the brand's identity became intertwined with high-performance engineering. Mercury was showing the world that outboard motors could be thrilling, efficient, and robust all at once. Speed records fell, and the boating community took note. By the mid-1950s, Mercury was known for its lively outboards, bearing iconic names like the Mark series. The Mark 20, Mark 25, and especially the Mark 55 gained a reputation for reliability and speed. Boaters fell in love with their sleek styling, easy maintenance, and that deep-throated roar that signaled Mercury power from a mile away. Fuel efficiency improved, materials became more durable, and engineering smarts gleaned from the racetrack seeped into every new model that came off the production line. By the late 1950s and early 1960s, Mercury was no longer the scrappy underdog. They'd quickly become a dominant force in the marine world, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with established giants like Evan Rood and Johnson. One key advantage was Mercury's willingness to pour money into research and development. Keith Hafer was less concerned about short-term profit margins and more about long-term technological leadership. This forward-thinking strategy paid off in spades when Mercury introduced more powerful engines that were not only faster but also more user-friendly. Mercury's shift to the distinctive phantom black paint jobs gave their outboards a striking appearance that some folks loved and others hated. The dramatic dark aesthetic matched the brand's bold ambitions. And speaking of bold, Keek Hafer himself was known for flamboyant marketing. He would show up at events, wearing all-black attire to match the outboards, accompanied by stunts designed to highlight Mercury's superior performance. One rumor has it that he once left a Mercury engine running in a tank of water for days straight at a boat show just to demonstrate straight unmatched durability. The marketing showmanship might have seemed over the top, but it worked. Mercury emerged as a brand that was edgy, exciting, and thoroughly confident in its product. But the path to the top wasn't all smooth sailing. The company was sometimes accused of aggressive patent strategies, locking down technology to keep competitors at bay. And let's not forget the big question that always loomed. How would Mercury maintain quality control amidst growing customer demand? Skeptics wondered if the pursuit of performance would lead to corner cutting. However, Mercury managed to maintain its reputation by continually refining manufacturing processes and focusing on rigorous testing. By the end of the 1960s, Mercury was widely regarded as the outboard to beat, whether you were fishing in a quiet lake or shredding the waves in a powerboat race. One of Mercury's defining features was the relentless push for new designs. The 1960s and 70s saw bigger engines, improved gear cases, and the introduction of features that made the boating experience more comfortable. Electric start systems became more common, eliminating the dreaded pull-cord fiasco that had been a source of jokes and frustration for many boaters. Mercury's engineers also played with new materials, seeking to reduce weight while boosting power output. Aluminium alloys and refined machining techniques became standard, ushering in a generation of engines that provided better power-to-weight ratios. Then there was the famous Tower of Power, the inline six-cylinder outboards that Mercury rolled out. These tall, sleek, intimidating motors quickly earned a cult following. They represented not just extra horsepower, but also a significant leap in engineering complexity. Mercury took the risk of stacking multiple cylinders in a narrow configuration to keep the engine housing slim, which gave it that towering profile. Drivers loved the torque and the satisfying roar. Neighborhood marinas might have loved it less, as quiet lakeside sunsets became overshadowed by the distinctive Mercury growl. While these innovations thrilled boaters, not everyone was on board. Some felt Mercury's rapid pace made older engines obsolete too quickly. Others questioned whether the move toward bigger, louder engines was overshadowing a need for fuel economy and environmental considerations. Eventually, environmental regulations began catching up in the late 70s and 80s, forcing all manufacturers, including Mercury, to reconsider how to produce Use power without excessive emissions. But for boaters who longed for excitement, Mercury's design leaps made them the talk of the town, solidifying the brand as the cool kid of outboards. 
No company this influential escapes a bit of drama. Mercury's history contains its fair share. In the 1960s, there were patent disputes and lawsuits flying between Mercury and its main rivals in the outboard industry. Each side accused the other of copying designs, leading to a courtroom spectacle that made waves throughout the marine community. People started wondering if these lawsuits were stifling innovation, or ironically driving companies to push harder to stay ahead of each other. Mercury, of course, framed itself as the pioneer being copied, while others saw them as overly litigious and protective of their technology. Another lightning rod for controversy was Mercury's high-performance obsession. Critics argued that focusing on racing and record-breaking overshadowed the average boater's real-world needs. Some models were rumored to be less forgiving if not maintained properly, leading to a reputation for either smooth sailing or sudden failure, depending on whom you asked. Then there were the environmental critiques. For a time, two-stroke outboards, including Mercury's, were known for spewing fuel and oil into the water, a reality of the technology back then. Mercury had to walk a tightrope between continuing to offer thrilling performance while transitioning to cleaner, more efficient engine designs. Even Carl Kiekhafer himself was at the center of rumors. Known to be stubborn, he was rumored to have refused to hire engineers who didn't see things his way or to have demanded near-impossible feats of performance. Some employees found him inspiring, others found him tyrannical. Regardless, Mercury's culture of perfection can largely be traced back to Kiekhafer's refusal to settle for anything but the best. The controversies, while sometimes heated, fueled the brand's mystique. Mercury was synonymous with passion, risk-taking, and a refusal to compromise, which, love it or hate it, only added to their allure. Mercury Marine's legacy is defined by the engines they launched up to 1989, many of which still power boats today. Their early models reflected a commitment to performance and a response to evolving market demands. The 1950s Mark series, especially the Mark 55, set the stage with its blend of reliability and power, making it a favorite among fishermen. The 1960s saw the Merc 1000 Tower of Power revolutionize outboards with an inline six cylinder, 100 horsepower engine. Mercury continued pushing the boundaries with models like the 1150, 1250, and 1500, thrilling speed enthusiasts. Though their roar might have disturbed the peace, it was music to the adrenaline seekers. By the late 70s and early 80s, Mercury introduced the Black Max V6 series, boasting up to 200 horsepower. These engines delivered exhilarating speeds but were fuel-hungry, a growing concern during energy crises. Still, performance reigned supreme. As the mid-1980s approached, emissions regulations forced Mercury to innovate. The XR2 and XR4 attempted to balance power with efficiency, foreshadowing the eventual shift to four-stroke technology. Despite these challenges, Mercury's reputation for speed and reliability kept sales strong. By 1989, the company stood at a crossroads, balancing its racing DNA with the need for cleaner, more efficient engines. Yet through decades of innovation, Mercury had already redefined what boaters could expect, proving they could adapt, lead, and continue shaping the industry's future. And that's how Mercury Marine changed boating forever, blazing a trail with groundbreaking engines, flamboyant marketing, and unforgettable racing wins. From those first reworked Thor motors to the powerful V6s of the 1980s, Mercury set the standard for performance and reliability on the water. Jokes aside, it's a story brimming with innovation, controversy, and a dash of showbiz flair. Everything you never knew you wanted in a boating tale. If you enjoyed this deep dive and want more stories like this, remember to subscribe. It's your ticket to more epic marine adventures. See you next time.